Cat, it's Maximus here. We'll get into the review and teardown of this HP 2040 and Makita. Just explaining why some videos like this Herbram pl plug wrench end up at like midnight and it's like an extra video. It's not really an extra video. It's just Makita or, dang it, YouTube doesn't allow you to set a default start time when you schedule videos. It always defaults to midnight and sometimes I just forget. Uh, I do multiple videos at a time because I upload every day. And just darn it, sometimes I forget, and I would like to have videos every day. So instead of just like skipping a day because I had one go up at midnight, I just put I'm gonna put up this Makita video. It's gonna be like you know whatever 17 hours after this video of the plug wrench. And so in case anybody's wondering why that happens, that's why it is. Is because sometimes I forget to hit the proper start time for the scheduled video, and it just annoys me because it's extra work for me when I do that. Really annoying screw up. Caddis Max was here this time with a review of a Makita HP 2040. Found a couple of Makita tools recently. The HP 2040 is their cheaper edition. They also have an HP, I believe, 2070, which is their more premium one. And this was just a basic 6 amp, I believe, 1 inch or 3 quarter. Nope, it's rated for half inch in steel and in concrete 20 millimeters so three quarter inch rating so this is not as stout as the Bosch that I reviewed yeah I guess maybe it was a week or two ago that was 8.5 amps that Swiss had made Bosch but this is still a Japanese made Makita year and month that's how Makita you know when some manufacturers use types Milwaukee just has serial number series Makita dates their tools so this is a 23 year old hammer drill Hasn't been used very much. Does not have a rotating brush card, so it does not have full power in reverse. And it's a little bit lower RPM. The Bosch was 1100 and 3000. This is 950 and 2900. So it's reasonable for the 6 amps. As far as a half inch drill, you know, it's reasonably powerful. We do have uh, the side handle does engage with these teeth, so I do appreciate that. And it's just a, an old basic. Makita hammer drill. Their higher end one is totally different. It has a whole metal gear case, which is more ergonomic. I think it has LED lights in the handle. But as far as a cheaper hammer drill, even though probably in the year 2000, this thing was still probably not cheap. I mean, I suspect this is probably $120 to $150 uh, in the year 2000. Uh, we can tell it's a cheaper model. This is not a billet steel chuck. We have the billet steel collar, which is engaging the teeth, but then this is a press sheet metal body. It's not all one piece. Makita does include the flat, so it is easier to replace the chuck if you want to. I was indeed fortunate enough to get the case in this one, so the case is pretty decent. Has a little area to store the bits, and surprisingly enough, it actually indeed did have its side handle. And the depth rod, which is like almost never there. The depth rods for these things are like rarer than hen's <laughs> teeth. But it's graduated in both centimeters as well as inch demarcation. So do you appreciate that? And it clips in right in the lid along with the side handle. Even though this has like some interesting cutouts here, I tried and apparently the drill will not fit in the case with the side handle attached, which is a little disappointing. It is a Makita, so it's using, I believe, S-series chuck keys because we have an S2 on there. But it's, you know, Makita and Bosch are both notorious for uh, not using uh, dimensions that are Jacobs compatible. So it's always a hassle. If you lose a chuck key for a Makita key chuck drill, uh, you have a bear of a time trying to find the darn right key that actually fits. You're always stuck going to, like... You know, some tool store or something trying to dig up the parent, the appropriate keys. And just to make a fool of myself, I was just noticing this is a Jacobs UK. So maybe Jake and S2A. And I don't really understand that. So this actually is a Jacobs chuck. But I guess Jacobs, when they're selling chucks to the overseas versus domestic companies, they use different dimensions. So that's even a bigger Minus, you know, that's throwing salt in the wound to have it be a Jacobs chuck that doesn't actually take standardized Jacobs keys. How special is that? Enough whining about that.
We have a push button here. All this is doing is when you push it over, it allows a recess for the chalk to push in and engage the dog teeth. The other way, it prevents the chalk from pushing in and engage the dog teeth. One thing I will give them credit for, it is a two-speed hammer drill and it has no clutch. That Bosch, even though it was powerful, uh, it has a clutch in it, which it seemed to be slipping a lot quicker than or easier than I desired. Although I had somebody comment on that video that the Bosch is very reliable and can drill many, many holes. I kind of like the idea of having one that doesn't have a clutch. This is modern enough to where Makita is using fine teeth or fine blade pitch on the fan, plus these hor multiple horizontal slots. And what that does is reduce the whistling of the fan. And so it just doesn't scream quite as much as other drills. And I do appreciate that. Changing the gears, it doesn't have that. The Bosch was nice because it had a spring loaded mechanism. So you could actually turn the gear change all the way over and then it would just click into place. This, you gotta fiddle around with to get it to go into each gear. The thing that I like about, and every once in a while, they'll just magically line up and I was able to put it back in the first gear without any hassle. These two-speed hammer drills I actually like. I don't like hammer drills for drilling in concrete unless you're just doing tiny little holes to mount signs. Anytime you're doing anything that's three-eighths or larger, I use rotary hammers because they're the way to go. They are just on all levels so much better than a hammer drill for drilling through brittle materials like masonry. Not too brittle. You don't want to use either one, an impact type drill at all, when you're trying to make a hole in glass or something like that uh, because the whole thing will shatter. Back to the two-speed hammer drills because they're half-inch drills and they kind of offer a nice advantage of being a half-inch drill with Good torque and first gear, being able to run most of the bits you would expect to run on a half inch drill. This may not run a 2 and 9 16 self feed bit, but it'd probably run an inch and a half or two inch self feed bit. And would probably run maybe a one and a quarter inch auger, maybe a one and three eighths. I don't know how it would do on those larger sizes, but it just offers you a nice half inch drill. It actually, out, you know, with the nice side handle, it just gives you a bit of meat and weight. And then you have the option to go to high speed. Uh, if you're just running smaller bits, you're running a little 3 8 inch or half inch spade bit, then you can knock this up to the high gear and drill those holes real fast. So the two speed gearbox offers just a lot of versatility. As far as how aggressive the dog teeth are on this, that seems to be pretty decent on par with the Bosch. Some of these some really cheap hammer drills, one of the ways they cheap out is just not having very aggressive dog teeth in them. Um, more aggressive dog teeth tend to wear out quicker, so professional manufacturers like Makita have to use more expensive, harder materials uh, so they can have aggressive dog teeth that also have a reasonable lifetime. Anyway, I'm not going to do any hammer drilling with this because it's just noisy and makes a bunch of vibration. I'm not a big fan of that. I will run a one inch auger, but I think we'll take it apart and take a look inside. Slightly more modern Makita, so these are using both uh, slot flathead compatible Phillips screws, which I do appreciate. My screwdriver is getting pretty worn. It fits pretty well, but being a Makita, I would suspect these are JIS screws, Japanese Industrial Standard Format Phillips. But usually with JIS screws, there's actually a little dot that's stamped into the head of the screw that designates JIS. I'll give Makita credit. All the screws are the same size. Ten screws in this unit. It's held together reasonably well. It does have a loop here so you can put a clip or a hanger or whatever you want on it. I kind of It's rarely used but it's nice to see that with tools because occasionally uh, you're up on a ladder or something using one of these things and, or scaffolding. It's just a good way to secure the tool. Uh, nonetheless, ten screws is pretty reasonable. Get this apart. This is post Makita. It seemed the 90s was the, about the end of Makita's using polycarbonate bodies. This is going to be a nylon body. Super complicated mold. You can imagine how long the CNC had to work on the piece of steel to make a mold like this. 
get a little zoom in here. Do you like what I'm seeing? Although it's only a six amp rated switch, which is the same rating as the motor. Six amps at 250 volts. This is using an Eaton switch, premium brand. Eaton makes, uh, they're primarily known for making uh, industrial electrical products. We can already see a ball bearing at the back of the motor. Folded contacts, but it's not too bad. Being a higher six amp motor, we can see that even though there's plastic, I guess, got or they're not guides. There's a plastic surround, but on a brass brush guide. Where I just did a video on a Makita 6510 LVR 3/8 inch drill, and it was all Bakelite for the brush guide. So it's nice to see that these are at least brass. We can already see at the reduction gear that we have a ball bearing on the tip there, and in this section here where the dog teeth are for the hammer drill, um, and for the motor to integrate into the first reduction stage. We can see that it's helical cut, but I do like seeing this cast aluminum housing, essentially, that we have in there. If you're wondering how the two-speed works, it's real simple. This is the gear. It slides on splines, so when you change the gear, there's just a shift fork, and it just slides it. And the reason that you have to fiddle with the chuck is in order to get those gear teeth to align. So when you go into high speed... It changes the reduction ratio, and when you go into low speed, it just engages this little gear into the big spur gear. And then it just goes back and forth, transfers the power via the splines. We do have a ball bearing up here, which is supporting the end of the chuck, so I guess the only thing to find out is if they have needle bearings in the back here, which is going to be kind of an adventure to get... get all this out because this all is kind of put together as an assembly and then set down into the housing as all one big assembled unit I wonder if I can get no that's not going to cooperate this idler gear here this is all one piece machine and then the helical cup portion is a separate gear press fit on the back Here's our spindle. It's all steel. When you're, when you have the hammer, we have the whole steel backing here. When the hammer, there's just a uh, steel bushing here that supports the back. Kind of support. There's two different supports. We do have a slight undercut to hold oil, but this is a big, solid, centered piece. Adds a. It's so thick because they're just adding a bit of mass. I can see that Makita is doing something that I haven't seen before talk about that in just a second and then there's the other side of the dog teeth which is just a press fit piece again onto the spindle but I've never seen this before curiously there's a spring there so and we can see so what ends up happening there is that I think that's an attempt at a form of vibration reduction although it may diminish the effectiveness of the hammering because of course you're putting a lot of pressure on it it's just going to be pushing this back, but I think that's exactly what it, why it's spring load is just to provide both a constant tension, but just to soak up some of the vibration in there. And is a hallmark of Makita. They don't use, they oftentimes do use bushings. We can see on the back of the spindle there we have a sleeve bearing, and we have a sleeve on the back of the reduction and a ball on the front. If you look up close, we can see a four-tooth motor arbor, and that's really becoming the industry standard. It's really been proven over decades of power tools that really having coarser, thicker teeth last longer than finer teeth. It's really particularly in situations where it's not an oil bath. There is oil from the grease. But these are not bathed in oil, and so it just you get more lifetime because the thicker, the whiter the teeth, the deeper they go into the motor arbor, so you get more total material cross sectional area. And, like, I mean, certain hand drills aren't, but like this hammer drill, I mean, reciprocating saw, so many tools, that's what they're going with. It's the coarse four tooth motor arbors. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is how they're doing the thrust bearing 
you're wondering, well, it isn't pushing against that. What they had is a strange little peg that sits in the back of the spindle. And this little peg either presses against a little metal piece when you have it in drill-only mode or when you have it in hammer drill mode and you slide that switch over. This whole thing is able just to basically slide into a hole. But in drill-only mode, it, the thrust is actually just on this little pin right here. So strange. Anyway, let me get this back together. It'll drill a hole. Did put on the side handle. We're on first gear, so this... Actually, let me make sure I... I'm not going to drill into my little stool here. Should have absolutely no problem getting through this. Especially in first gear. And it did that pretty easily. I can tell you 100% for certain, like the chuck key wants to slip on this. This is a terrible, terrible chuck. I'm going to end up replacing it with something better. But I like to show this with the hammer drills is um, using spade bits. Surprisingly enough, we're having high gear, so we'll see if we can drill this hole, whatever it is, 2900 RPM. But I'm going to put it in hammer drill mode just to show the performance difference. It's like the one uh, kind of advantage of a hammer drill, particularly like the cordless hammer drills that are just so common when you get the nice ones, um, is when you're using spade bits, the hammering action drives and gives you just a little bit deeper bite. You drill faster holes with a hammer drill when using spade bits in wood. It's kind of interesting. So this first one is going to be... Um, without hammer which of course it did absolutely fine we're gonna do it in hammer mode now and see if we can get a discernible difference in speed <laughs> Like with the Bosch, the Bosch would actually engage its clutch. This, you could hear it, I stalled it out a couple of times just because it was getting such a deeper bite. But yeah, ha using a hammer drill with spade bits means that you drill those ho uh, holes fast. Anyway, other than that, not a lot else to say about this Makita besides... Overall, I think it's just fine. It's stalling out at the end there with this one inch spade bit. I mean, it was at 2900 RPM, even though it has a six amp motor, that's geared, uh, that's a pretty high gear ratio. Not a lot of torque, so I don't blame it at all for stalling. Other than that, interesting design with that spring-loaded um, fixed dog, even though it's not really fixed. The worst part about this, once again, is the chuck. Really gonna have to invest in something nicer than what it comes with. Another reason I say that is when it comes to power tools, kind of like hand tools, I mean, a place like Home Depot and Lowe's is going to go through tools and get rid of the old tools, but you'd be surprised. You'll walk into, you know, small town America, true value, and they'll have power tools that have been sitting in that store for 20 or 30, 40 years. It's amazing. I've been in true values and seen 30-year-old new power tools that just have never darn sold. So I'm sure there's still some of these sitting around. I don't know if Makita still sells these or if there's, you know, a more modernized version. But overall, for a Makita low-end hammer drill, besides the chuck, it's really not too bad. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.